guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be my first costume Halloween tutorial look and today I was doing a glam and gore look. Um, actually inspired me for this look is you guys, if you've watched my get to know me video, you know that forensic files are my favorite. It's really morbid, but um, this reminds me of like if you were to be shot in the back of the head kind of thing, um, your eye would be gone. I don't know. It's a little time consuming to lay down the products, but actually you can do this whole look with, um, I spent $9.75 on this liquid latex. If you have some cotton swabs around and some cotton balls, uh, tissue paper, that's free. And then all you, else you would need is some fake blood of wherever you want. You can use a sponge you have around the house and kind of like a grease paint set up like this and pretty much everything else you can scavenge from around your house like what I use for the eye socket and things. I am by no means a special effects expert or person. All of these techniques I learned just from watching YouTube videos and then I just put my own idea on it. I'm sure someone out there has done something like this before. Um, I can't really find anything so I'm going to link below some of my personal favorite special effects people to watch, like Goldie Starling. She is amazing. Um, Glam and Gore, I, she's awesome too. Um, there is Ashley, I think Ashley Corbin, who is Australian, who's amazing. All those I'll link below, guys. They do far, far better tutorials than I could ever even imagine. So I would check out them for some Halloween inspiration if you want. Um, this side I kind of did like just a little light smoky eye with some eyelashes and lipstick. Um, I would do my hair, but I'm about to hop in the shower, so I'm not trying to have to shower twice. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in how I did this kind of shot in the back of the head through your eye <laughs> look, please stay tuned. First things first, let's tie up our hair and get it out of our face. Next, I have foundation and my eyebrows down on this side. Um, that little spot is the only place that I don't have anything down yet and my eyes have been primed. I'm gonna use a dark matter stack in this color blur on my MAC 224 and I'm gonna start a smoky eye. Next, I'm going to take Unseen out of the dark matter stack and I'm going to take my MAC 217 and go over the crease of my eye. Next, I'm going to go in with Enigma from that same stack and I'm going to place it on the outside corner of my eye and bring that over slowly into the crease. Now let's take Dark Matter out of that stack on the same 217 brush, pat it on the outside corner of your eye and then just blend, blend, blend. Going back with Blur, we're going to put that all over our inner third of our eye. I just wanted to go back through and deepen that up a little so I took some more Dark Matter on my Wing Gloss number 4 brush and just concentrated it on that outside V. Now I'm going to pick up some MAC Blanc type on this Wayne Goss number 18 brush and I'm going to pack that all over the inner third of my eyelid. Now I'm going to highlight on the side of my face where I'm not going to be doing the wound. So on this half of my forehead, the whole chin actually is going to be open and I'm just going to blend it in with my Beauty Blender. I realized I forgot to highlight my brow bone so I'm going in with my Wayne Goss number 17 brush and some more of that MAC Blanc type. I'm going to bake under that one side of my eye. I'm going to use my La Mer with a damp beauty blender and just pack that on underneath my eye while I am doing the rest of my makeup. For this next part, we're going to be outlining the, where the wound is going to be. So it's best to use a pencil that is closest to your skin tone. For this, I'm going to use the NYX Wonder Pencil and I'm just going to draw out the shape. I want to be sure to keep liquid latex away from my hair. So I am drawing a border to of where to go up to my scalp for. For this next part, I'm going to cover up one side of my eyebrows. I'm going to use this washable Elmer stick glue um, just because it's really easy to remove with a hot, warm washcloth. Or in the shower, I'm going to put a few coats of this down on my eyebrows and go through with a spoolie to smooth them out. That's one, and let them dry in between. And now I'm going in with the second coat. And then a third coat. This is just going to help protect our hair from the latex we're going to lay down. I learned this method from Bonnie Corbin. Um, she takes some masking tape or regular tape and she sticks the two pieces together to make like a sandwich and then she puts it over her eyebrow and that basically just creates a shield tube. I like to put them together a little off center so there's a sticky part that can stick to my skin instead of having to put it down with more tape or latex. Next you're going to want a disposable little cup or lid or bowl or something to put your liquid latex in. I didn't have anything so I just cut a cup and then I'm going to 
pour my liquid latex into that in small pieces so I can always go back for more, but that way I don't waste any. You also are going to want to use two-ply tissues. You can also use toilet paper or tissue paper, but the two-ply you can separate and make thinner, so these are the best to use. Now I'm going to pour the latex in a cup and go on with a cotton swab and just fill in the area that I have outlined. Make sure to keep the latex away from your hair or it will rip it out, so don't let your hair get tangled in it. As I get the latex down, you can even go over that spot on your eyebrow when you want. Um, you're just going to rip up pieces of the tissue paper and you're going to just lay it down and put it all over where you have the latex. Um, I found that it was best working in smaller pieces opposed to trying to lay everything down at once because it would start to dry. So get pieces done in sections. After you get that first layer down, you're going to want to go back over it with some more liquid latex and you're going to want to make sure that you kind of smooth out the edges. So go a little over the edges with the liquid latex to give it more of a seamless appearance so it doesn't just look like you have a big pile of something on your face. For the area near my eye, I got a little too close with the um, tissue paper, so I just took a small pair of manicure scissors and just cut around there, making sure not to get too close to my eye or my eyelashes. If you are not an adult, do not do this. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you cover every piece, so a layer of latex, toilet paper, and then another layer of latex on top. And then you want to allow that to fully dry until it's almost like yellow. So it took me about eight and a half minutes. Then you're just gonna repeat the same process. You're gonna put down a layer of liquid latex. You're going to put more tissue or toilet paper over the top of it. And then you are going to go back through with another layer of liquid latex and allow that to completely dry between layers. I'm only gonna do two layers here. Remember, keep it away from your eyelashes and your hairline. then allow the second layer to dry again. Now when it's dry, it should appear yellow and kind of tacky. We're gonna put down where we want the wound to be. Yeah, this <laughs> I can't rip through this thing. Whoa, liquid latex, whoa. So at first I tried using my spatula tool, as you can see, and it was actually more difficult to rip open than I thought it would be because it is kind of rubbery. Well, it's latex. So don't be too afraid to pull on it too hard because um, it is stuck on there pretty well. I later found that switching to tweezers was a little easier, pointed ones, because I can kind of dig in there and rip it apart. So that's what I did, and I kind of followed a diagonal line um, down my eye. And now you just want to make sure that you rip it open where you want the wound to be and totally peel it back so you can see the inside. Now it's time for the eye socket. For that, I'm just going to use any piece of black cardboard. I have this from a peacock look I'm going to do. I'm going to measure my eye with just my fingers and then place that down on the back of this cardboard, trace it out with a pen, and then I'm going to cut it out with a pair of scissors. This was a little large for my eye, so I just went back through and trimmed it up until it fit perfectly in that socket and didn't stick out too much. You want it to be really kind of flush with your eye. Now to attach this, I'm just going to put a little liquid latex on the back of that, put a little around the socket of my eye, and then lay the piece down. Then you just want to hold it in place while it dries for a little bit so it has good suction. Now that that's on there and dry, we're time to do the inside gutty looking parts. So we're going to lay down some more liquid latex. Now make sure you keep your piece open and away from that latex because it could stick to it and dry it. So we're going to put some cotton balls down on the latex and then cover the cotton balls with more latex. You just kind of want to swirl it around to give it texture. You want to make sure that you go over the eye socket area too so it blends nicely. You don't want to cover it up, but just go around the border of it. While that is drying in there, before I go over with the second coat of latex, I'm going to take my Ben Nye Neutral Set and I'm going to powder the outside of the eyepiece um, just to make sure that I've taken away all the shine and it's no longer sticky. So I put some on the inside piece there too so it didn't stick to each other. Um, just go all over with any kind of setting powder. Now take a Q-tip with more liquid latex on there and just kind of swirl it all around in there. You really want to give it some kind of texture and to kind of look like tendons or muscles or anything like that. And then again, you're going to want to let it dry. 
This I learned from Goldie Starling. She said to take some of spirit gum, 50% spirit gum, 50% water, and then it'll help um, lay down the edges a little better and blend them in. So I'm basically just putting some on my brush and then smearing it on the edges. After that part is done, we're going to want to go in with some more neutral set just to powder the inside there so we can paint it next. Now it's time to paint it. For this I'm going to use the Krylon Super Color Cream Makeup and this is in six color burn and injury circle. So I'm going to start with the um, deeper red tone and I'm just going to use this on a synthetic brush that I don't mind ruining because I don't know how often I'll use this. And then I'm just going to go in and paint over the wound I made. Now I want to make sure that I'm not completely saturating it because I am going to want to go on with other colors and make sure you get the inside flap too with some redness so it looks like blood. At this point I was thinking it probably would have been smarter to start to the outside of this first and then work my way in. So I'm taking some of my Maybelline concealer. This is in the shade light and I'm going to go over the outside of this piece just to help blend it in. At first I started using my Real Techniques brush and then I opted for a smaller brush for more precision. You really want to make sure that you get the outside flaps too and so to help get those and not get my brush red I actually just took a piece of cardboard from the cardboard cutout I I used and I put that underneath here and then I just went over it to make sure that I got every last little edge. After you have the foundation where you want it, I'm going to go through with some Studio MAC Fix uh, powder here and I'm just going to dust it on the outside. Make sure you're not using brushes you love so you don't ruin them. And now to finish going through and painting the inside. So now I'm going to take this other red color in here and I'm just going to kind of stipple it on over the existing red and kind of all over in there. Now I'm going to take this rose color out of the palette and just apply some to the very outer edge of where that wound is supposed to be ripping to kind of look like irritated, dead skin. It doesn't need to be too precise, just get it on there. Then I'm going to use a cotton ball to blend it out because I saw Bonnie Corbin do it, so it must be good. <laughs> so I'm going to do it too. Now I'm going to take some of that center black cream color and I'm going to color in over that cardboard piece just to give it a wet kind of look because we want it to be kind of bloody, gory, gross. And here I decided to take some of the black and just touch it in a few spots in the wound there and then use a cotton ball or a cotton swab just to kind of blend that in a little to kind of just disperse it a little. I don't want it too black in there. Now for some fun part, the blood part. Now this is Fresh Scratch by Krylon. They make fresh scab and different bloods, but basically it's a thicker consistency. It kind of looks like a gel blood and it will dry down nice. So I'm just gonna go in with a synthetic brush and just touch it around the wound, making sure I'm focusing on the outside pieces and then really covering up that socket on the eye just to make it look really gory and gooey. From what I've learned, it appears that the more different textures of blood you use, the more realistic the wound looks. So now I'm going in with this FX blood in the color dark because the light one looked too much like fake bright neon red. And I'm just going to use a synthetic brush and trail this in there too. No rhyme or reason, just kind of all over. I found this kit at the Spirit Store. Um, it had this larger sponge in there. It's just kind of like a rough texture. This is perfect for imitating blood spatter. So I'm going to pour a little of this liquid FX blood out onto a plate and then I'm going to use this big black sponge in there and I'm just going to stipple it around the wound just to mimic kind of blood splatter. The more liquidy blood will definitely drip down your face and then you can just stop it where you want it with a q-tip like that and then I'm going to pick up some more with a q-tip and I'm going to go into the little crevice of the wound there so it looks like some blood is dripping out of there. Now I'm going to go through and finish my makeup on this side. I'm going to curl my eyelashes. I'm going to tight line my waterline with some black gel liner. Then I'm going to go through and highlight my inner corner with some MAC Shroom. 
I'm going to put mascara on my bottom lashes just like I normally do guys with my Blink Eyelash Primer, then follow with my MAC Giga Black, then with some Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill on the top. Now I'm going to put some false lashes on. I'm using the Coco Goddess Lashes. Got to let that glue dry. Then I'm going to line my lips with Max Cherry Lip Liner and I'm going to fill it in with Dose of Colors Merlot Liquid Lipstick. To add some finishing touches to the prosthetic piece side, I'm going to pick up some black eyeshadow on just a random brush and I'm going to just stipple that all over the prosthetic piece just to make it look a little more bruised and kind of beat up. I just went and scared Keegan on the couch while he's watching football and he says this looks like I got hit in the face with an ax. So maybe you could say that too. You guys can do this look on any kind of wound. It doesn't just have to be this. Um, so if you want a big gash on your face or something like that, I was gonna do kind of like the torn mouth and exposed cheek over here, but that was just gonna be too busy. So I just picked one thing. This is the finished look, guys. Um, I just went through and kind of glammed up the side of my face or tried to, but the part that wasn't gory. Um, you guys obviously can interpret or do however you want. Hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you next time. Um, my next tutorial will be a Halloween, more of like a glammy look. Bye guys.